Hey guys, it's Kisera, and today I'm going to be doing my February week four reading vlog. great reading week. I finished first of all seven books last week which was kind of crazy. There were some shorter books among those so that's probably why and I got a little obsessed with one of the books. So like I had a five star book, I had a 4.75 star book but I also had two books within the three star range. So like it was a pretty good week last week and it was pretty diverse also I feel like. So if you missed that reading vlog I will link it up in the cards for you guys. Also that reading vlog came out super late because my computer just did not want to edit that vlog. Well, also I was running late on uploading it and then my computer crashed. And then the next day it was still crashed. So I had to like restart it and stuff. It was a really long vlog. It was like the longest one I've had in a really long time. Anyways, as always, I'm gonna start with the books that I'm currently reading. So first of all, the rollovers from last week. The first book that I'm still currently reading is Shorefall by Robert Jackson Bennett. So this is an e-arc that I got from NetGalley. It's the sequel to Foundry Side. And I'm really, really excited for this one. I still haven't made any progress on it. Probably because it's an e-book, it takes me a longer time to read an e-book and I got super distracted by all of the other books that I was reading last week. My other rollovers from last week, the first one is The Lady of the Lake by Andrzej Sapkowski. This is the final book in the Witcher series, like the finale. There is another book that came out in the Witcher series, Season of Storms, but it's one of the prequels it's set in the same time as the first book in the series and this one I'm really really loving so far I'm almost done with it but I was listening to the audiobook and I had to return the audiobook and I said I would pick up the physical book which I did I did pick it up I'm having difficulty with the physical book there's only a hundred pages left mind you and I'm having difficulty with it because I like the main characters of this book Siri and Geralt and even Yennefer but the other characters and when I don't really care that much for and there's a lot of like little scenes from other characters point of views it's written almost like a TV show in that way and it's annoying me every time I pick it up so I'm gonna try and read this one today and if it turns out I don't like it, reading it physically I'll cave and get the audiobook on audible even though I don't want to spend a whole credit the last book in a series not having any of the other books in the series but I am really enjoying this one and it's my favorite book in the series so far but I will try and read this one today first before doing that and the last rollover that I have from last week is Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson so uh, this is a rollover from like October like from a very long time ago I'm still at the very beginning because I only read one chapter last week but I am enjoying it. I really like the chapter that I read and this is going to be one of my main focuses this week. Not necessarily today because I have a few books that I started like yesterday that I'm going to talk about in a second but I will be focusing on this one mainly this week. I probably won't finish it because like look how much is left of it unless I spend a lot of time with the audiobook which I may actually do that because I have the audiobook for this one and I like switching between the audio and the physical book for this one so we'll see how that goes but I'm definitely excited to continue on with this one and hopefully finish it soon because I've been reading it for way too long and that's mostly because I'm getting distracted by other books not because I don't like this one. Now I did start two books yesterday. Well actually the first one I started on Saturday. So this first one I started Saturday night and that's Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. Mahurin? I think that's how you pronounce her name. Anyways I started this one on audio because I got the audiobook from my library and I expected to be really drawn into this book right away because of how much hype was surrounding this book when it first came out. And just based off what people have said about this book, I felt like I should have loved it the way that I felt really drawn into like books like The Cruel Prince and Six of Crows and Strange the Dreamer the first time around when I picked up the audiobooks for all of those. I felt super drawn into them right away. And I didn't feel that way about this one. Like the first hour of the audiobook, I was like, I can see the potential in this book. Like I can see where I would really like it, but I don't think I like the audiobook. So that's why I decided to finally buy the physical book. It was only like $9 on Amazon and it was free same day shipping. So I was like, you know what? Let me just get the physical book and read it. I haven't read much physically. Like I'm still pretty far into the book because I listened to a lot of the audiobook. I'm right about there, but I read like three or four chapters physically so far. And I think I'm enjoying it more reading it physically than the audio. So I'm gonna continue on with this one physically. Like I still have the audiobook and I might switch back and forth between the two a little bit, but I think this one's mainly gonna be a physical read for me and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I'll end up liking it. Like, I mean, I just bought 
the hardcover of this book so hopefully I'll end up liking it. So far I do like the main characters and I'm excited to see where the story is going. It has a very like almost cliche conceit at the beginning because it's just set in a world where there are like witches and then witch hunters and a witch gets into this situation where she has to end up marrying one of these witch hunters and of course he doesn't know she's a witch. It has that conceit at the beginning which I don't know how well that actually works but I'm I'm buying it right now so we'll see how this goes. Hopefully I'll end up liking it and since I decided to read that one physically and not on audio I needed to get a new audiobook and I literally just got this one off of hold so I decided to start it and that's Sharp Ends by Joe Abercrombie. Of course I was gonna pick up another Joe Abercrombie book. I'm not too far into it right now. This is a series of short stories set in the first law world and I was really excited for this one partially because I knew Galacta, one of my favorite characters of all time, makes an appearance in this book. Unfortunately, he makes an appearance in the section of his backstory, like before he becomes one of the best characters of all time, but it's okay. Like, I'm sure there'll be more of him in here later, and there are some other characters that are new that I'm excited to get to know a little bit. It is a series of short stories though, so those are not my favorite, but we'll see how this one goes. And lastly, a couple weeks ago, I don't remember which vlog, Wicked Saints was one of my unwrapped books and I misplaced the book, so I didn't end up reading it. So I said when I found it that I would bring it back and spend a week and give it a week for an unwrapped book. So this is gonna be my unwrapped book for this week and hopefully I'll get to it and hopefully I'll like it. So we'll see how that goes. All I know about it is that it's a YA fantasy that when it first came out, there was a lot of hype around it. So maybe I'll end up liking it. Maybe not. I don't know. So it's still Monday. So I sat down earlier today planning on picking up The Lady of the Lake by Andrew Sapkowski. And well, I ended up picking up Sharp Ends instead. So I made a lot of progress on Sharp Ends by Joe Abercrombie. I'm almost done with it now. I decided to switch to a different audiobook for a little while just because this one is pretty heavy and pretty dark and I just wanted to kind of relax with something lighthearted. I had planned to pick up Serpent and Dove but somehow I ended up reading one of the other audiobooks that I had picked up instead from my library. It was The Wedding Date by Jasmine. I forgot her last name but I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see it. This is an adult romantic contemporary about a black girl and a white guy who gets stuck in an elevator. He's on the way to this wedding in which he's part of the wedding party, but his date backed out on him at the last minute. So he asks her to go with him and they kind of start a relationship that way. I have to say the beginning of this book really drew me into the story and I wanted to know what would happen. I really liked the very beginning of this book. Like I really, really liked it. I'm pretty far into it now though. Like I'm almost done with this book. It's an eight hour audiobook and I've just been doing errands all day. So I've kind of been listening to it while I've been doing errands. After like the initial like startup of this book, I'm honestly a little bored with it. Like I kind of regret picking it up because like I could have been listening to Sharp Ends this entire time or Serpent and Dove, both of which I had been planning to read, but this one I picked it up on a complete whim. And while I'm enjoying it to an extent, it is annoying me a lot because a lot of it is just, there's no conflict. Like both of the characters have like the exact same mind and both of them feel like are way too into the other person and they think that the other person's gonna break up with them. Like that's the entire plot of this story and it's annoying the crap out of me. Like I still wanna see what happens at the end. Like I wanna see what happens. Like I'm fairly certain I know what happens because this is the first book in a series. The second book in the series is called The Proposal, so I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen. But at the same time, like I want to see it through because I like the beginning so much, but the little like twists and turns that are going on are annoying the crap out of me because it's just like there's no actual conflict. It's just people inside of their heads thinking that there's a conflict when there's not, which is annoying me. So yeah, that's how I'm feeling right now. I'm gonna finish this book over the next hour or so and I'll check in with you guys after I finish it. So I finished The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. I ended up giving it 3.25 stars because as a romance novel, it did draw me into the story and I wanted to see what would happen next. But as a novel in general, the actual conflict of the story really annoyed me because it was like such an easy fix that like just talking to each other would have fixed everything. So that really annoyed the crap out of me. I really don't like it when just like communication issues are the issue. I like it when the conflicts are irreconcilable differences where like people legitimately think differently from each other. It's more complicated and messy. And this one was actually pretty simple. Because of that, I ended up giving it 3.25 stars. But like I said, it's a cute, fun romance novel that 
if you're in the mood for it, it's really good. So it's Tuesday, February 25th, and I just finished Sharp Ends by Joe Abercrombie. Most of the stories I enjoyed. I didn't love them, but I enjoyed, because this is a series of short stories. That last story, though, was crazy good. I really loved the last story in this. It makes me really excited to start a little hatred. Like, I just, I can't wait. I do wish that this was not a series of short stories. Like, I wish they could have, like, put this as a whole novel or something, especially that last story. That last story would have been really good as like a full novel, but it's fine. Like there's another book in this world for me to read still and I'm really excited for it. So I ended up giving this one 4.25 stars. So I already had my camera set up over here, so I just decided not to move it. It's still Tuesday, by the way, and I just finished The Lady of the Lake by Andre Sapkowski and I really enjoyed it. Like once I got past all of those like shorter like scenes and finally got back to Siri and Geralt and Yennefer. I loved it. Like I really, really love the ending of this one. It is so, so well done. I got really close to thinking that the ending was just gonna be kind of run of the mill and then it wasn't and I was excited about it. I love a really good ending and I loved the entire book. Like honestly, this was my favorite book in the Witcher series and I ended up giving it five stars. Also, I should probably mention, I finally got the audiobook for Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. So I started that earlier today. So far, I'm really enjoying it. So it's kind of about a black man who feels like he's invisible because when people look at him, they don't really see him because of his skin color. I haven't gotten super far into it yet, so I don't know exactly what it's gonna be about, but this book like gripped me from the very beginning of it, which I didn't expect. And I really like the audiobook. Like the audiobook narrator does a really, really good job with it. And I'm really excited to see what happens in the rest of this book. So it's still Tuesday. And when I finished Lady of the Lake, I needed to start a new book. So I decided to pick up Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. I am right about there now. So I finished the first like eight chapters or so. This is one of my books from my fantasy book series challenge. It's one of the ones that I picked out in the month of February. And I'm pretty excited for this. I had previously picked up this book and de-enact it and part of the reason why I did that because I was kind of bored with it but I'm honestly really enjoying it like it is a straight up like grim dark fantasy book that seems really interesting to me at this point it's about a young prince who left his family to go fight in this war so he's estranged from the king and the rest of the royal family but he's still the heir to the throne and he is with these bands of brigands basically fighting in this war and so far it's been interesting i'm interested to see how i think of it the further i get into it it's pretty short though for a fantasy book like it's pretty thin yeah only 316 pages so i'm pretty sure i'm gonna finish this relatively quickly so you'll get more of my thoughts on this by then i've also made progress on serpent and dove by shelby marheran this one i feel like i'm enjoying it more when I think of it as a romance novel. If I think of it as a fantasy book, I just get kind of bored by it. But if I think of it as a romance novel, then I really enjoy it because the romance of the story is really the main plot of the story. There are conflicts that are like more fantasy related conflicts that are like irreconcilable differences, which is one of the like things that I like about conflicts. If I just think about it as a romance novel with these fantasy conflicts in it, and then I end up really, really enjoying this. And I'm excited to see how it ends because I have a feeling it could be a really, really good ending. Right about there now. So I'm almost done, like 150 pages left or so. So probably not gonna finish it tonight, but I am excited to continue on with this one. So it's Wednesday, February 26th, and late last night I finished Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahirin. The last like part of this, cause it's broken up into three parts, is really, really good. I really, really enjoyed that last part, both as a romance and as a fantasy book. So I enjoyed that. It reminded me a little bit of the way Sarah J Mass writes, not necessarily the way the romance is written, but just, in general, she writes very romantic fueled fantasy books. It's really a romance book that happens to have fantasy elements. It happens to be set in a fantasy world. And that's what this book really is, which I actually really enjoyed it. There were some parts of it, like especially towards the beginning, where I really felt like I didn't feel the romance as much as I wanted to. And then I feel like I would have had a better rating experience for this one if I had only read the physical book rather than listening to the audiobook. And I figured out why I prefer the physical book to the audiobook for this one. And that's because with romance novels, there's a lot of like descriptions and stuff between the two characters 
which when I'm reading physically, I kind of skim over a little bit and I don't get frustrated with it just talking about that over and over again. In the audiobook, you can't really skim anything in the audiobook, it just plays. So that seems bad to say, but that's why like with my romance sort of more fueled books, I tend to prefer to read them physically because any parts that I'm not as interested in, I can skim over a little bit and it doesn't bother me. But I still really enjoyed this book and I ended up giving it 4.25 stars. Okay, so it's Thursday, February 27th and yesterday I made a lot of progress on The Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. So far I'm really enjoying it. It's a little mind bendy, like I'm not exactly sure what is happening, but I feel like that'll clear up as it goes along and it's the type of book that I really like on audio. I feel like I wouldn't like this book as much as a physical book but the audiobook is really really well produced and I'm really enjoying it so far. I also made progress on Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. I'm about halfway done with it now. I'm enjoying this one also. I don't know why that surprises me so much because Mark Lawrence is an author that I really like. He has a very interesting writing style in this book and I really like it. Like I really like it like even more than I liked Red Sister, which is surprising because I really loved Red Sister, but part of the reason I loved Red Sister so much was because of the female aspect of it. And this one, like all the characters are male characters as opposed to Red Sister where like all the characters were female characters and I'm still really loving it. So I don't know. I'm enjoying this one and I'm excited to see where it's going. Okay, so it's Friday, February 28th. And first of all, we have to talk about Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan, because this is my unwrapped book for right now, which this is the book I've had for about a year now. It was an Alcrate book, so it's not a book that I chose. And it's been my unwrapped book for about a month now and I haven't started it. I gave myself until tomorrow to read this book in order to keep it. But if I'm being honest, I am just not that interested in it. So it's gonna be an unhaul. I'm sorry if this is one of your favorite books of all time. Let me know down in the comments. Maybe you can convince me to keep it. I can't force myself to read a book that I'm not interested in when there are so many other books that I'm actually really, really interested in. So yeah, I feel bad for not even giving it a chance, but like, it's just not one that I'm interested in at all. So. I'll be unhauling this one. On a lighter note, last night I finished Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. So this book, I didn't expect much from it going into it because I actually DNF'd this book twice before I read it this week. So the first time I DNF'd this book was like years ago, like back when I was first getting into high fantasy. I think it was just a bit much for me back then because it's very much grimdark fantasy. And back then I didn't read a lot of grimdark at all. Like I was reading like the Wheel of Time series and the Mistborn trilogy. Like those were the types of books that I was reading back then. While they do get dark at times, they're much less lighter and the more heroic fantasy if you know what I mean rather than grimdark which this is very very grimdark especially the main character is extremely unlikable and back then I didn't like unlikable characters very much this one didn't work for me that much I tried to read this one again in 2018 and I feel like in 2018 I was still very much a newbie to grimdark fantasy I hadn't read you know like first law yet or anything like that I had only read a song of ice and fire so I don't think this was the right book for me then it is the right book for me now though. I like this book a lot more than I was expecting to. I love the main character. He is very much an anti-hero, unlikable character who like the first like 75% of this book, I was just like, you have zero redeeming qualities. Like what is that about? He's also kind of a caricature if you think about it because He's 14 years old, but he's like six feet tall and he's like good at everything. He's not really a real person, but at the same time, he's had an interesting enough upbringing that it engenders some sort of sympathy for me, if you know what I mean. And I especially liked the ending. I think the ending really, really worked for me in this book. And even though like, there's a lot that I wanted from this book that I didn't get. There's a lot like to the world building. There's not a whole lot of detail there. And like the plot is very simple, like character and plot story. So there's a lot to like the world building and the writing style that like I just wasn't getting. And even like side characters, it didn't have the complexity to it that I typically look for in my Grimdark and in my high fantasy books. But I did enjoy reading it while I was reading it. And I ended up giving it 3.75 stars. I do think this is a good book if you want like like a fast grimdark fantasy read i think this is a pretty good book because it is pretty fast paced and it's pretty short so you can finish it pretty quickly as well like it's 316 pages in the mass market paperback so like in the hardcover i'm sure it's less than 300 pages or close to less than 300 pages i enjoyed this book and 
I'm excited to continue on with this series. The other one is my audiobook Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. This is part of the reason why I decided not to read Wicked Saints is because I'm just really, really interested in Invisible Man right now. I want to finish it by the end of day tomorrow so that I can put it on my February wrap up because I think it works really, really well with my February reads and I'm really, really enjoying it. Right now, it's going into more like the culture of unions and stuff like that, which I find fascinating. Like it's really interesting and I'm excited to see where this book goes. Also, highly recommend the audiobook for Invisible Man. Like highly, highly recommend the audiobook. The audiobook is so well done. It has me like on the edge of my seat all the time while I'm reading it. So it is Saturday, February 29th, and last night I made a lot of progress on Words of Radiance. I actually continued reading this this morning and I made a lot of progress on it. I'm really enjoying this. So last night while I was reading it, there was a scene that was like on a ship and it gave me very live ship traders vibes just because of the way the magic was used during that scene which I really, really love. I just like love the world building in this book. The world building is so well done. I'm excited to see more of this. There's a lot of different characters that are introduced here that get me a little disoriented, but I still love like the main characters from previously. Right now, my favorite character in the story is Shalon which surprises me because she was not my favorite character in the first book because I really, really loved Kaladin and Dalinar in the first book. Their storylines aren't as interesting to me right now as Shalon's is. I'm hoping that that'll all mix up later on and I'll start liking the other ones a little bit more. Not that I don't like them, it's just that, you know, Shalon's storyline is really, really interesting to me right now. And of course there are a bunch of other new characters that have been introduced that I have to get to know better. But like I'm 200 or so pages into it now and I'm really enjoying it. So since it is Saturday, it's time to just summarize what I did this week. So I ended up finishing five books this week, three that I own, two that I don't. First of all, for the two books that I don't own, the first one was The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. So this one is an adult romance novel with a biracial couple. I really love the beginning like the beginning and the setup really caught my attention but as the story continued I really didn't care for the conflict of the story because it was very in the characters heads and the characters seemed to be the same person and seemed to have the same problem except if they just talked to each other it wouldn't have been an issue so that really annoyed me. I ended up giving it 3.25 stars. Other one that I don't own that I finished this week, Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. Did I not mention this? I might not have mentioned this. By the way, last night I finished Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison and I loved it. That being said though, it is kind of twisty. Like there were times when I really wasn't sure what was going on. I loved each scene that I read. I'm not sure how all those scenes connected fully, but I loved it. I'm not sure if this book is genius or just like a crazy man talking, but at the same time, it was really good. I ended up giving that one 4.75 stars. It's definitely a book that I think in the future I'm gonna have to reread and get a physical copy of and read it physically because it is really interesting. Like the structure of this novel is really interesting. And I really liked like the ind individual scenes. It almost felt like short stories where you can see kind of the interactions that this person has with society and during that time period, the cultures and things that they had to go through was incredibly gripping and I really, really enjoyed it. Also highly recommend the audiobook. The audiobook is really, really well produced. Really enjoyed it and I ended up giving that one 4.75 stars. Now for the books that I own, I believe the first one I finished was Sharp Ends by Joe Abercrombie. This is a series of short stories set in the First Law world, which you guys know I love the First Law series. It is fantastic, it is dark, and it's gritty, and it has great, great characters. Like, the best thing about the series is the characters, and I love it. I was a little disappointed with Glockta in this book because it wasn't the Glockta that I wanted, and you guys know Glockta is like my favorite character of all time but it's okay. The last story, the very last story was fantastic. It's about, I don't even want to say what it's about because ugh, I just, I loved the last short story in here. I didn't love all the short stories in here. Actually, the majority of them I was just like okay with and like that first one really annoyed me, but the last one was really, really good and I really hope that we get like hints and clues of that in A Little Hatred. Like I really hope we do. I don't know if we will, we'll see. We'll see, because I know a little hatred is kind of set in a different time period, so I 
doubt it, but maybe, you never know. Anyways, I enjoyed reading this book and I ended up giving it 4.25 stars. The next one I finished was Lady of the Lake by Andrzej Sapkowski. This is the final book in the Witcher series. I loved the ending, I loved the finale. Like the first 75% of this book, I absolutely loved. I was like on the edge of my seat the whole time. I liked the way the book started and it ended. Like it was just mm, perfect. I really enjoyed it and I ended up giving this one five stars. And lastly, we have Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. This one I enjoyed way more than I was expecting to because I was kind of expecting this to be like a three to two star book and I still only gave it 3.75 stars, but I did really like the main character and I kind of liked his journey and I'm excited to see where he goes in the next book in this series. So I ended up giving this one 3.75 stars and I did really enjoy this one and I do plan on continuing on with this series. So I don't know how I forgot, but I actually finished a sixth book this week, Serpent and Dove, which I did enjoy. I really enjoyed this one. I actually spent a lot more time, I think, on Serpent and Dove than I did most of the other books this week. So I don't know how I forgot about it. I think it was because it was like at the very beginning of the week, but I enjoyed this one as well. It's definitely a very romantically fueled fantasy book, which I feel like is more of like a new adult book than YA, even though it's marketed as a YA book, but I enjoyed it and I ended up giving this one 4.25 stars. And the last thing I should probably mention is I decided to unhaul Wicked Saints. I didn't even attempt to pick it up. I just decided to unhaul it because I just was not interested in it. Earlier on in the week, I kind of started looking up some of like the good reviews and stuff on this book and yeah, they didn't make me want to read it more. Let's just put it that way. Based off of like people that I follow or people who I'm friends with on Goodreads, like that I have similar opinions to and how they felt about this book, I just feel like it's not one that I'm gonna end up liking. So it's gonna be an unhaul. And again, I'm sorry if this is your favorite book. So that is all I have for you guys this week. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I post videos every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, so consider subscribing. I also post bonus videos if you wanna be notified as soon as I upload, you can click that little bell icon. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up to support my channel. All social media links are in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.